Hello, welcome to Chrysalis Invictus Tarot. I hope that you're doing well. <laughs> I never know what to say in the beginning of these things. Um, welcome to the reading. This is a another character sketch. So these readings for me are not only like to help you with people that you know in your life, but if you're an artist or a writer and you're trying to develop a character um, to give you kind of like um, motivations and things like that or, or attributes, stories um, to help you if you're blocked with that kind of thing. Um, so I feel like it really works whether you're asking about someone specific or not. If you are asking about someone specific, the theme today is um, what do you need to know about this person? So what is the important information, key motivating factors, that kind of thing. I do have an entire playlist of character sketches. So if you don't find the person that you're looking for here, you may find them in one of the other videos. So as you can see, I have four different piles. We have Cancer, Saturnus, Capricorn and Sagittarius. So I drew those at random and whatever one is calling to you, that will be your pile. If more than one calls to you, maybe there's more than one message here for you. We're going to use the Lenormand cards to help tell the story of this person. And before we get into it, I would like to acknowledge our ancestors, any energies, entities, guides that are with us at this time and ask them to join us here, delivering messages that align with our highest and greatest good. And I ask that we all take a moment to send healing to those who are persecuted for these types of practices, for using tarot, and for those who have brought this tradition to us, so we give thanks to them. And when you're ready, please make it to your pile. All right, pile number one. That was a very awkward, rambly intro. <laughs> um, but I think... Okay, so first of all, there's some nervous energy here. Um, this is a person who hides their feelings behind, hides their feelings behind anxiety, um, nervousness, that kind of thing. And it may make them seem meek or powerless. Um, so there's a bit of a victim mentality here to this person. Um, but they actually gain control through being meek. So, you know, their rigidity or their stubbornness um, when it comes to their anxieties ends up controlling the situation um, because they, their absolute refusal to do certain things or to um, go certain places or to budge on certain things. And the main factor in that is their anxiety. That's where it comes from. So let's take a look at the story of this person. I wonder if I can do, if you can still see it, if I do that. So again, using the Lenormand cards. Okay, so this is a person who, um, I feel like they had a really strict upbringing. They had, um, there was a lot of control in their upbringing and they are continuing and perpetuating a cycle that comes from that time. So rather than being a um, cycle breaker, they are a cycle follower. Uh, there is a fear of going against the grain or going against the norm. Even though their behaviors may seem abnormal, they are still attempting to be normal. I put that in air quotes. And with the lilies, yeah. So they're a deeply committed kind of person, very loyal. Um, 
but there's a strong sense of tradition here. So it may be hard to break them out of the um, a traditional value system that they hold. They're very stubborn. Okay, but they're, they're also a very generous person. Um, they like to do favors for people. Uh, they like to, <laughs> I'm hearing they like to have people indebted to them. So again, part of that victim complex that we talked about before might be, you know, that people exploit their kindness, but then they force their kindness on people. So if this is sounding familiar, um, you're probably at the right pile. But there is a sweetness and a softness and a kindness to this person. It's just that these, um, these rigid, stubborn tendencies hold them in this place of, um, again, more tradition, more rigidity. Um, it's almost a, a, a prison for them but it's something that they would not want to. It's like an oppressive system that they belong to or that keeps them subdued. They would um, protect that oppressive system. This is someone that would protect a, an abuser as well. Okay, and, and there could be a strong religious bent here. And if they're not religious, because in these times, sometimes, you know, um, people who would have ordinarily been religious apply that to other things. So they could be very religious about science, for instance. They could be really stuck in, you know, a belief system uh, and it makes them very difficult to argue with, very difficult to, um, they, again, there isn't that mutability. Uh, when it comes to their emotions, their emotions are quite deep. They're actually a very sensitive person. They're very touchy. So if you say anything that is remotely um, triggering, this can set them off. But it doesn't set them off in necessarily an erratic way. Like they don't necessarily express it outwardly. Um, they express it in certain behaviors or by shutting down. So the more their sensitivity and their emotions are triggered, the more rigid they become and the further they're drawn into this re religious um, zeal almost. Uh, it's, that's, their, that's their safe place. Mm. Okay, so this is someone that likes to... Um, literally likes to garden. They also really like the comforts of home. Um, so they're going to stick to home. They're going to focus on the home. If they spend their money, it will likely be on their home um, or on objects to fill their home. There is a, there's a tendency here to, again, control, to organize, to, um, like this is a, this can be on a spectrum but it could almost be a delusional sense of like everything's all right um like a need to to a need to be like nope this is fine or um, when they frame things, they frame it in this, like, it's, it's not even a positive way. It's just a, an avoidant way. Uh, so what would be an example of that? Like if someone around them, a child, grandchild, um, you know, is making lifestyle choices that are against their beliefs, um, 
they will have a different way of framing that. They will just almost like ignore it. It's shoving things in a closet or under a rug. Yeah, and so this is someone who has a tendency to make themselves very small um, to protect themselves. So, um, you know, sometimes when people, they, this could indicate that there was abuse at some point or, um, or even just like a big personality. And to navigate that situation, they made themselves small. So they made themselves meek. They made them, they make themselves um victim like in order and that is their defense that's how they win um but they would not see it that way uh but it's definitely something they make themselves small they could be very sneaky so they um this would not be a person that considers themselves dishonest because they don't blatantly lie but they do um in that they're very sneaky and that they'll do things without asking um, and they tend to cross boundaries by doing that. So let's get you some advice in dealing with this person. What do we want to take for advice? Um, I'll do Whispering Woods, I think, for you. That's what I'm feeling. So some advice for pile number one about their person, about this person they're asking about. Uncertainty. The shades of gray within the fog will eventually lift. It's funny because I feel like this person doesn't really see shades of gray. That um, You may notice that they use the terms always, um, a lot or have a sense of it's this or that I do feel like there's something about how to navigate this relationship with this person that is very tricky that is very um, like you don't know when you're going to step on a landmine. They could feel very inconsistent because they um, oscillate between deep sensitivity and being closed off and being very rigid. The shades of gray within the fog will eventually lift. Yeah, so I think it's a, it's a matter of your perspective on this person um, will shift. Um, you know, maybe you have been framed as their abuser a number of times or, you know, you, like depending on what your situation is with them. And if that's the situation, if that's the case, it's about you shifting your perspective and understanding that this is just the way that they um, frame everyone to protect themselves and learn. Take a lesson from the owls, deeply observe the night and you'll become a little wiser in the day. Yeah. Uh, um, observe how this person handles crisis. Um, what is their actual capacity to handle crisis? I think it's quite low. Um, and they, or they can handle it by shutting down and becoming rigid. Um, there, there isn't a stepping into the flow. This person really intellectualizes everything that they um, go through and everything that they do. We have hope. The star card was here as well. Hope, an idea like a single acorn can start a wondrous forest. I think if you feel trapped with this person, if you feel smothered by this person or like caught in a perpetual cycle with this person, um, there, there is a lot of cycling with them. Um, and, and the sense of the perpetual and the sense of the past reliving itself. And um, you think that you have broken through to a next level and then you're back where you started. Um, 
with this perspective switch and with you um, looking at them more objectively, there will be a space there for you to to navigate either away from them or it you know if it's a family member and it's someone that that is not easily navigated away from perhaps a way of coping and dealing with the way that they are you know part of the um, issue that we have with people is just accepting the way that they are um you know if someone is as rigid as this person is they are likely not going to change so it's up to us when dealing with a person like that to to shift our perspective and decide whether this is something that we want to be around. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there for you, pal number one. Thank you so much for joining. I hope this was insightful. And again, um, please check out my information in the description box below. And any other readings on my channel, give it a like, subscribe. Take care. Saturn, our Saturn pile. This is a person, let's just jump right in. <laughs> This is a person who is um, very wise, very deep, um, who shoulders a lot of responsibility, a lot of the blame sometimes in situations. They may have been the black sheep of their family or a scapegoat at some point in their lives. Um, this is a person who experiences really... Um, maybe not experiences, but who has a great sense of responsibility and um, takes themselves and their work seriously and their place, their relationships. They take things quite seriously. So let's get into a little bit more. And if they are not older, they are someone who is an old soul. There's very, very much an old soul vibe here. Interesting. The ring. Okay, so this is a person who has a clan-like mentality. They very much um, place themselves in sort of packs um, and are very loyal over time to the people that are still there so they don't really give a whole lot to new people in their lives so if this is a person that's new to you um it may take a, a quite a while for them to open up but once they are committed they're very committed to um to people this is someone who takes um, tradition again with that responsibility takes tradition very seriously um, but is also illuminates tradition so they may be um, quite creative in how they adopt traditions so though they are um, you know they have this like sort of stern sense of responsibility they are um, creative the tower Okay, so this is someone that really values um, learning, tradition, structure. Uh, they they probably have are well read and have a broad range of knowledge. Um, so they wouldn't just be knowledgeable in one area. They probably they likely have knowledge in many areas. They're also someone that is not afraid necessarily to walk away from a situation that is not serving them so they have a really strong sense of boundaries or if they don't at this time they will this is part of their character so if they are not expressing that strong sense of boundaries they will at another point in their life come to that yeah there is this sense of um, I feel like they've had to make a lot of choices in their life. I feel like they come to this crossroad quite a bit in their life. Uh, there's a sense of discernment and it seems to others like they always know where to go, um, like that they are a, a guide or a teacher or a leader. And so you may feel really tempted to follow this person and you wonder why. And it's because they have this it feels almost like they're a GPS, like they know where they're going. And um, it may not feel that way for this person, but that's how it seems to others. 
yeah, for this person, <laughs> I was asking how it feels for them. For this person, it feels like they're wandering around in a fog, um, that they're making all kinds of mistakes, that they're very disorganized, that they haven't, that they don't know enough. Um, this is a person that has a lot of self-doubt, actually, which is strange because of the um, external presentation. The external presentation is so strong. So they may have an ascendant that's very strong, um, like Capricorn is coming in really strongly. Um, Saturn rules Capricorn in Aquarius. Um, so they may have that like strong presentation, but underneath it, they're just kind of like um, sifting through things. This could also indicate that there was a lot of deception in their younger years. So, um, not really, you know, they, maybe they were projected on quite a bit or gaslit or something of that nature where, um, that led to them not being totally sure of who they are. Um, so there could be a bit of a, there's like this firm sense of themselves, that peeks out from behind the clouds um, and that is their internal world but on the in the external um, people are willing to follow them okay and this is a person who creates a very strong um, holds a very strong space um, they are able to take on a lot of um, emotional, material, physical burdens. Um, they work, they can work extremely hard if needed. Uh, they do have a tendency to disappear or to hibernate um, with the bear, the, the, it's, um, it could be deep introversion uh, is what I'm getting here. And this could be when, you know, they go deeply into their studies and things like that. But this is definitely someone who knows how to protect themselves. And again, if they aren't doing this now, they will later. Some of these um, aspects of ourselves are things that we grow into and some things are things that we grow out of. So, um, yeah, this person is a fixture. So they have this really solid presence that makes people feel comfortable, but there's also something about them that's very insurmountable. Um, so you may find that they don't open up easily and that you're not really quite sure where you stand with them or how to feel about them because they are very self-protective. Um, even without the boundaries, they are self-protective they have these built-in mechanisms to keep themselves protected strong strong earth energy very capricorn here yeah and this is someone who has experienced it's almost like their passions even though they're very earthy and people see them this way they are very driven by passion and so their passions have led them into Mm, several painful experiences. This is a person who would give great advice because they've made lots of mistakes. Um, this is not a simple person. So um, there's there's a there's a complexity to all of this that um, you know even in this reading, I'm only going to be able to capture a snapshot of who they actually are. Um, they are. Mm, very parental so this is a person who would be drawn to being a parent um, or to something that is very nurturing if they are not a parent they are someone they take on a parental figure almost uh, they like to they like to shield and protect the people that they love and if you are within that fortress of their love and and once you're in there i think i said that at the beginning once you're in there you're locked in you're in there for for life you are part of their part of themselves and they will work very hard to maintain that though they may not um be physically or present or communicate very often it's still a presence that they maintain Okay, yeah. And there's just a, such a strong energy here of being a parent and um, there's something childlike about them despite their wisdom. We have a lot of court cards here. There's something almost regal about them. 
um, and wise. It's sort of like the old man and the young boy in one. So you may sometimes experience them as being very old and wise and sometimes experience them as being very young. There could be ways that they're, um, that they are somewhat underdeveloped in terms of, you know, their emotional intelligence, for instance, or, um, you know, we all operate at different levels. It doesn't really work in a linear progression, but there's definitely something here about a timelessness about them. They may seem old or young at different times. So I'm going to get some advice for you in dealing with this person. Now that we have a good sense of who they are, what motivates them. Humility. Yeah, this is not someone who wants you to put on pretenses or to impress them. So the more that you try and impress this person, the more they'll pull away. The same goes for attention or trying to be close to them. The more you try to get close to them, the more they'll pull away. They want to come to you. Um, and whether you see that as fair or balanced is your, you know, that's up to you. But that's just um, one of their qualities. Flowers are unaware of each other's beauty. They bloom regardless. So this is a person that really values um, people being themselves, being aligned and authentic to themselves um, in a, um, but with growth. Like you can see that um, though there are some very firm and fixed energies here, there's growth. There's always growth. There's always growing. So just something that they um, will really value. So if you are afraid to be yourself or to be vulnerable, um, they're going to pick up on that and they're going to respond to that in some way. Dance. Mm, okay, so this is someone who really likes the... Um, the feel and response of a conversation or for interactions to really flow, to dance, to um, to be rhythmic. So uh, if there is any kind of like, um, I don't want to use the word imbalance, but if it feels like, okay, for instance, someone who will only ever wait for their turn to talk would not be someone that this person would ever want to be around because um, they want that give and take and not that it has to be equal, um, but that it it has to feel natural and flowing. Um, they may have a tendency to control the dance. They are definitely the leaders. Allow yourself some fun each day, just as the sun dances with the moon each night. So this could be something that this person would really need help with. Um, so if you are someone who is like more fun loving um, because of their experiences, because of how like intellectual and um, grounded they are, it can be hard for them to have fun sometimes. So if you can um, lift them up into this childlike energy that they have. They will love and respect you for life, honestly. Um, that is something that they value so, so, so much is that um, ability to laugh, the ability to flow, to, I don't know, vibe, I guess. Retreat. Yeah, that's what I said about how they just disappear. Spoil yourself in the morning mist. Breathe in nature's sweet scents. So in times of like, if you're in a romantic relationship with this person and they, t they have a tendency to disappear, what this is telling you to do is to, or even in a friendship, to really, um, they're going to really love coming back and hearing all the beautiful things you've done for yourself. They really love to know that you've done things for yourself. So, um, you know, you're encouraged here to, to, um, appreciate the times apart when they withdraw, appreciate them as periods of time for growth and that you're going to come back together because this person is so loyal. They will just be there. Um, and when you come back together, um, you'll have more things to laugh about and yeah. 
Um, so risk, learn to grow wherever you are planted. Definitely with this person, I mean, until they, um, there's, I think there's always going to be a sense of this with their personality, um, because that's what I'm dealing with here is personality and, and more of the fixed aspects of this person. And so I think that things are really on their terms. It's just how they are. And so, um, if that is something that you are not able to grow with, to flow with, to vibe with, then that's not going to be for you. This person is definitely calling the shots in terms of leading. Um, so, you know, in a dance, there's the, the, um, the leader and the follower, and they are always going to be the leader. They don't know how to, they don't know how to follow. It's just not in their nature to do that. So I think I'm going to leave you there. Pile number two, give this a like, subscribe to my channel. I don't know why I said that that way. Um, I'm so glad that you were here with me today. Bye. Pile number three, welcome to your reading. Okay, so what I'm getting from this right off the bat is that this is a person who likes to make a bold statement, who likes to hold a sense of intrigue, that likes to be... Um, even though we have Capricorn here, I'm getting more the energy of being front and center, being center stage, having all of the all eyes on you in some sort of way, but in a way that is mysterious. This person likes to be elusive. Um, and they're really driven by passion, creativity, experience. So we have the bouquet. It says, from beautiful flower bouquets, happiness arises, not small joys, but luck in everything maximizes. Yeah, this is someone who has a really, um, a lot of stories, a lot of different experiences, who really values um, trying new things, going new places. This actually has a very little to do with Capricorn, I feel. <laughs> um but you never know, right? If you are looking for more of a Capricornian person, maybe look at um, a different pile because we've definitely had that yet so far. Okay. Um, so this is someone who really takes charge of their own happiness. So if something is not amusing them or is not feeling right to them, they just kind of move on. They're not... Um, they're not going to stay at a party if they're not having fun. They're going to go find or make their own party. Yeah. There can be a tendency here to, um, to avoid going deep. But we'll take a look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a string of lucky enterprises the fish near you will bring... Far away, they tell a tale of losses that will sting. Okay. So this, yeah, this is a person who doesn't really like to delve into their grief or their grievances or, you know, the things that have um, necessarily hurt them in their lives. Um, there could be, you know, a certain level of avoidance here. Um, and a tendency to make emotional decisions that they think aren't emotional. <laughs> um, so they're really driven by these emotions that they uh, are, that are unprocessed. Um, but they do this with humor. So it's not like they're a dark and gloomy person. They do it with humor. Yeah, here we go. So it says, um, this is the whip, and for a husband, the rod means domestic quarrels most dire. For a wife, worry or gloom will most likely transpire. Um, this indicates that there was some difficulty in childhood. There was some difficulty um, in the home, and particularly in dynamics between 
men and women, masculine and feminine. I'm also getting something about sexuality here. So there could be some aspect of sexuality that was difficult, perhaps um, coming to terms with their sexuality or coming out um, to their family about this. Um, but really their, their domestic life um, has never fully reflected their external life, which is where the Capricorn would come in in that, you know, a Capricorn can appear very successful, very um, delightful to the public and then be, you know, the complete opposite in their private lives or vice versa. Um, uh, usually the, for, the, the, the former. So um, there's this aspect to them, right? That, you know, they, even when they're going through difficult things, they'll seem bright and sunny. Um, always ready to party. This can manifest itself in addictions, however, um, if unchecked. Being the life of the party. From lovely clover, happiness appears, but only if no dark cloud passes near. Yeah, avoidance. So there is this like really lucky sense of this person that they do end up, you know, their, their, their cheerful disposition, their, their personality really attracts people and it attracts good luck. So they've had a lot of good fortune, um, in their lives, even if they've had misfortunes, there's been good fortune to balance it out. You know, some people, um, have like a lay miserable like situation. This is not that person. This is this is a person where the the light and the dark balance each other. So and you see we have them like right next or opposite each other. The light and dark aspects. It's clover. With the anchor at your side, gains in trade come into view. If far away, mistakes and unsteady love will face you. Yeah, so I do really feel like this is a person who has had multiple um, long-term relationships or marriages even, um, and that they have a tendency to reinvent themselves quite a bit. So they may have had... Um, you know, many different jobs, uh, many different partners, many different looks, um, interests throughout their life. They just kind of keep rolling and keep um, changing, but there are periods when they get anchored, but I get that this anchor and what they're avoiding, this is a perfect little cluster to describe what they're avoiding and then what people see. So what they avoid is this, you know, this past and this just dysfunctional cycle because each time they get anchored, they get sucked back into the cycle. So if they stay out here and they stay unattached or they stay, you know, in that space of the public, um, then they're not having to deal with, with these, um, these other aspects over here. I got too many cards that time. This letter certainly promises a generous stroke of luck, provided it is not destroyed when a cloud to it is closely stuck. Again, there's the avoidance of clouds. It's like, um, so a bad time is going to hit this person hard. Their coping mechanisms are just not there so it's either burn it down and move on or um and keep going um but it's not likely that they're going to stick around through that crisis or be able to handle it on their own um there's this avoidance of the cloudy day so they try to avoid it as much as possible and one of the ways that they avoid it is commitment commitment is that um cloudy day for them or can be has been um the beginning is really hopeful and so um that's what kind of like gets confusing or mixed up i guess for them that a secret there might be it is written in this book let us now discover it giving the cards a closer look 
So what is the secret of this person? I think it's that they have more depth than they project, um, or they have... I think it's this this hidden domestic world. You know, the secret of this person is uh oh that they're a rolling stone, but they are a stone acting like a flame. So they're tearing through life with this le level of like instability and frivolity, but actually what they crave is the stability but they just don't know how to have it. The owl's hoot calls, but they will not create any great echo. A pleasant journey leaps into view when these birds are far from you. Okay, so the, yeah, with age comes wisdom and it is, you know, within this person's grasp to to grow and to reflect on these things and to come into a better place with these feelings over here and to come into so if you're interested in this person romantically they might be a bit avoidant of commitment or they jump right into commitment really quickly um, without thinking because they kind of just need to tear the band-aid off and that's part of the um you know earth acting like fire kind of aspect here or acting like water or seeming to be very irresponsible but they're just looking for stability um and this is someone who starts to settle more as they get older one more i feel like we need one more here When the friendly moon shines down at you from near upon your shores, he is announcing a nicer career, glory and honor are to be yours. Yeah, so when this person starts to um, reflect on these things and dig deeper into these things, so maybe through counseling or through, um, you know, some form of shadow work or whatever, what have you, self-reflection, um, that is going to bring them into this whole new life. Um, it's almost like day and night, like the person that they are in their youth and through their younger years until they get to this like point of, um, being able to integrate both sides of themselves, then, then they come into this whole other life. So this is a very confused person, I feel. Um, let's see if we can get some advice for you about them. Or how to deal with them whatever comes through advice please grounded keep your roots and stand taller than trees yeah so this person is really going to appreciate someone who is grounded um, and when they get chaotic especially for um, they're really looking for someone to stay grounded um, or someone who is flame retardant, honestly, so they can't burn you to the ground. Um, there's this feeling of um, them wanting to be grounded or um, maybe that part of themselves being unearthed and a strong longing for that. So just staying grounded when you're around them. And we have hope. We have that there. Um, a little bit with some stars in the sky. An idea like a single acorn can start a wondrous forest. And I feel like that is the creative ability of this person. Um, but it's also something that like, if you say something around them, they will think about it. Um, like you don't have to be heavy handed in the way that you communicate with them. You can um, plant a seed and they will, they will, um, take that into consideration even if it doesn't look like they are taking that into consideration they are storing this information and they're they're playing it over so while there is an avoidance there's still a processing that's happening resilient 
stay as strong as evergreen trees. Again, most of the advice here is just to stay, you know, fixed to know yourself. Definitely when you're dealing with this person, it's important that you know yourself, that you're true to yourself. Um, I'm hearing so you don't get carried away with the current. Yeah, this is a pretty dynamic person. They have a a very a bigger than life kind of energy. I think I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so that's what I have for you. And I hope this was helpful. Please leave me a comment. Take care. Pile number four, you chose Sagittarius. Welcome to your reading. Okay, so first I'm getting a closed mind and a closed book. Uh, this person does not open up easily. And when you take a closer look, there might not be as much there as you were hoping is the message that I'm getting. But let's take a look at the Lenormand cards and see what else we can find out about this person. I'm getting that they have a lot of... Um, They get really consumed in their thoughts and they're not always thinking about what you might think. They're not necessarily thinking about you or the situation. They're kind of like in their own space. Yeah, they have a very, okay. So this one, this is a person that charms. Mm, yeah, the charms. So that's part of the reason why they don't give anything away. It's almost a manipulative tactic. It's something to keep the upper hand and to keep communication in their court, if you will, in their control. Um, so they will weave a web of magical stories of um, flattery, perhaps, and you won't even notice that you don't know anything about them because they are so busy, <laughs> because you're so busy being flattered and so busy being um, listened to and giving information about yourself. Um, and this is a person who may very well be the opposite of how they appear. Um, so that snake in the grass kind of um, concept or, you know, at an extreme level, this could be someone that's a narcissist where they um, they come off in a certain way as very kind, very open, very caring, um, but they are actually working an angle. Yeah, and this is someone who has experienced... Um, they may have a very good story. They may even have a story that makes you feel sad for them or sorry for them or that gives you, you know, like where you admire them or that gives you hope or something like that. They have a bigger than life nature about them in some ways, but it it is still, it's a tool that they use to survive. They could be quite good looking um, and there's something about them that that people feel is familiar. So um, no matter who's meeting them, they will often experience that people think that they are someone that they know. I don't know if I said that right. Um, they always come off as someone that you've known before, like that you've known each other your whole lives or that you've known each other from a past life or something like that. There's um, this sparkling aspect to them, very charming, very charismatic, um, great sense of humor. But again, you don't really know who this person actually is. 
Yeah, that, that sort of thing is um, buried quite deeply in them. Um, they do experience a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of tangle here and winding things and things being blown with the wind. So um, there's something about them that it's almost like the more you untie the knot, the more confusing it becomes that there's, there isn't, maybe there isn't what you're looking for. There isn't that emotional layer that you're looking for. Um, it just doesn't exist. but it feels really nice to be around them, especially when you are flattering them. Um, when you are looking up to them, they really put you on a pedestal. Um, they put people on a pedestal, um, but they also put themselves on a pedestal. They have a very, um, they can be destined for good things or have a certain amount of luck in business. Um, and be able to start things and convince people to like come on board this is a person who can get people to fill a party that kind of thing um again with their charisma but also they have this 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 feeling of warmth and you feel listened to and you feel you know that um that th that you're seen um but nothing, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, nothing is what it seems with this person. Nothing is what it seems. Because underneath, like what is making this garden grow is a bunch of, um, past misdeeds people they've exploited or um, yeah they will they will they will put someone down to get themselves ahead for sure like without hesitating Um, this person may come off as self-righteous sometimes, um, and they may sound like they really know what they're talking about, uh, so they, they almost preach and people are really respond to what they say because the way that they say it, um, is very convincing and is very, um, it's like people want to believe what they're saying. And they tend to they tend to win every argument they enter just because of this like charismatic sense of self and this um, ability to influence others. Look at that. Okay, so there could be a. Um, there are a few people that will be under their protection that will be safe from them in a certain way, but they still will not. So, you know, let's say it's you who is safe from their, um, like they wouldn't throw you under the bus. They wouldn't screw you over to get ahead. Um, like you're one of the people that's safe and that's protected by them. They still are not going to let you in. They're still only going to give you a certain amount in order to maintain a certain level of control over you because this person is ultimately very clever very witty and it's all a survival mechanism to to maintain control advice we have path wander on the path less traveled what you might might what you find might surprise you yeah, your words get twisted with this person. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to the way that conversations unfold and whether um, up becomes down, down becomes up um, because they are very clever. 
This person may um, be quite popular, so um, the path less traveled may be in taking a critical view of them. They are not going to appreciate a critical view, so be very careful about what you express to a person like this because um, when you start to express <laughs> truth, essentially, um, or reflect back to them a version of themselves that they don't really like to see, they're going to get very defensive idle hours take some time out to lie on the emerald grass so if you are really tangled up with this person or really close to this person it might be um, good to take some time away from them if you can get it and just sort of reflect on different experiences you've had of them different conversations you've had um, and to really like what do you know about this person what have they what information have they given you and what picture does it build um the picture that it builds is probably the picture they wanted it to build forbearance do not be deterred by the thorn amidst the roses okay and this is for you moving forward so if this is a romantic situation or any situation even if this is a parent um one of the things that can happen with a person like this is that you come out of it with some trauma, with some relational trauma. And this is encouraging you to not be deterred. Not everyone is like this. This is a very specific kind of person um, with a very specific kind of personality. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to to walk away from this and to believe that that things can be things can be better and that not everyone is um not everyone is like this <laughs> i want more for you <laughs> i want more for you woods be like the woods calm soothing mysterious and full of life That's what they go for. Calm, soothing, mysterious, and full of life. That is the exact description that they are trying to meet. That is the exact personality they're trying to demonstrate. But take a look at what they actually do, how they actually relate to people, what the, you know, what the situations are, how they actually unfold. Because it could be that you um, agree to their reality without even noticing it. And trust. The robin trusts her wings, not the branch she sits on. So this person is, um, trust yourself. This person is the branch that you are sitting on and you are the robin. So trust yourself in this situation. Trust your intuition. Um, you know, if you have a conversation with them and you kind of feel turned around, uh, talk to a friend. Say, am I crazy? You know, um, hopefully you have a, a good friend that you can talk to about that. Um, so I'm going to leave you there. I wish you all the best with this person and with this situation and take care.